The horn is one of the most characteristic sounds of a railroad locomotive. And this video is about how to create custom horn sound slots for ESU's Loc Sound decoders from horn recordings. The basic horn sound slot in ESU's Loc Sound sound files consists of three main parts an init sound state that starts playing the horn when the function button is turned on, a loop sound state or sound container that continuously plays the body of the horn while the function button is active, and an exit sound state that plays the end of the horn once the function button is switched off. My custom horn sound template is set up in a similar manner with an init sound state to play the beginning of the horn, a series of loop sound states that continuously plays the body of the horn in a loop and an exit sound state to play the end of the horn. Additionally, I include transitional sound states to provide for a seamless transition of the sound as it flows from either the init or one of the loop sound states to the exit sound state when the function button is turned off and also from the last loop sound state to the first loop sound state as the loop repeats. Any horn recording needs to be split into these various parts to create the sounds for the individual sound states in the custom horn template. I use Audacity which is a free open source sound editing software to make my sound cuts. To demonstrate the process for making the sound edits, I have a recording of an Alco diesel locomotive horn open in Audacity. The first step is to isolate the init sound from this recording. I like to keep the init sound to no more than half a second long. I select the first 0.5 seconds of the recording, zoom in to make sure the selection ends with a waveform in the negative peak and at the zero amplitude line, and isolate the selection as a new track using the split as new feature. The cut is named as horn init. The next step is to isolate the sound for the exit section. Depending on the type of the horn, I like to keep my exit sound cut to between half and one and a half seconds. To capture the reverb at the end of this horn, I make my selection from around 3.7 seconds timestamp to the end of the recording. Zoom in to make sure the selection begins with the waveform in the positive direction and at the zero amplitude line, and then split it into another new track using the split as new feature. This cut is named as horn exit. The remaining part of the horn recording constitutes the loop sound, which is cut into multiple equal length parts. I like to keep each loop cut to between half and one second long. For this recording, I decided to split it into four loop cuts, each about 0.8 seconds long. Starting with the beginning, I select the waveform between 0.5 and 1.3 seconds Make sure the selection ends with the waveform in the negative peak and at the zero amplitude line and isolate it into a new track. This first cut is named as loop 1. The process is repeated to make three more loop sections, each named loop 2, loop 3, and loop 4. Next, a separate track is created by copying around 0.2 seconds of the waveform from the end of the last loop cut, in this case the loop 4 track. The waveform is selected and the region is adjusted so that it ends with the waveform at the zero amplitude line and then copied and pasted into a new mono track. Remember, do not use the split as new feature for this, but rather copy and paste. The track is named as Loop Exit End Cut. Similarly, I select about 0.2 seconds of the initial part of the Loop 1 track, copy and paste it into a new track, and name it as Loop 1 Start Cut. The initial 0.2 seconds of Loop 2, Loop 3, and Loop 4 tracks are likewise copied pasted into new tracks and named as loop 2 start cut
लूप थ्री स्टार्ट कट एंड लूप फोर स्टार्ट कट दीज फोर ट्रैक्स अलॉन्ग विद लूप एग्जिट एंड कट विल बी यूज इन क्रिएटिंग द एग्जिट ट्रांजिशन साउंड फॉर द इनिट एंड ईच ऑफ द लूप साउंड स्टेट्स Next I select around 0.2 seconds of the waveform from the end of the init track and copy and paste it into a new track. This track is named as loop 4-1 end cut. Finally about 0.2 seconds of the beginning of the exit track is selected. copied and pasted into a new track and named as the loop 4-1 start cut these two tracks will be used to make the transition sound for repeatedly playing the loop with this we have all the sound cuts needed to create the sound files for the custom horn sound states the audacity file can be named as master cuts and saved for further editing the next step is to create the sound mixes for the transition sound states Starting with loop 1 sound state as an example first a new audacity file is created with two independent mono tracks the loop 2 start cut track which is the beginning of the succeeding loop to loop 1 is copied from the master cuts file and pasted into the first mono track likewise the loop exit end cut track is also copied from the master cuts file and pasted into the second mono track Now using the time shift tool the loop exit end cut waveform is moved to the right leaving about 0.1 seconds of overlap between the two tracks It helps to zoom in and align the start of the overlap so that both waveforms are at the zero amplitude line The overlapping region of both tracks is then faded in and faded out using the adjustable fade feature and the tracks mixed into a single mono track to create the exit sound for loop 1 I name the track loop 1 exit for identification You may want to experiment with the different fade options in Audacity and also the extent of overlap to get the best results The same process is used to create the transition sounds for loop 2 by mixing the loop 3 start cut and the loop exit end cut and for loop 3 by mixing the loop 4 start cut and the loop exit end cut the last loop sound in this case loop 4 will transition directly into the exit sound without the need for an exit transition the init to exit state transition sound is created in a similar manner by mixing loop 1 start cut which is the 0.2 seconds section of the initial part of loop 1 sound with the loop exit end cut Again starting with an audacity file with two mono tracks the loop 1 start cut track is pasted into the first mono track and the loop exit end cut is pasted into the second mono track and the time shift tool used to create approximately 0.1 seconds of the overlap the two tracks are mixed into a single mono track after applying the necessary fade in and fade out to the overlapping region and named as the init dash exit the final step in mixing the various sound cuts is to create the transition sound that will enable seamless playing of the sound as it goes from loop 4 to loop 1 when the loop repeats to do this i start with a new audacity file with four mono tracks in the first track i paste a copy of the loop 4-1 start cut track from the master cuts file which is the first 0.2 seconds of the exit sound cut In the second track I paste a copy of the loop 4 cut and then use the reverse feature to reverse the waveform I delete around 0.2 seconds of the waveform from the end of the reversed loop 4 track to make its total length around 0.6 seconds 
This is optional and I only do it to keep the total length of the transition track to about one second. Then using the time shift tool, the reversed loop 4 track is moved to the right till there is about 0.1 seconds of overlap with the loop 4-1 start cut. Now in the third track, a copy of the loop 1 cut is pasted and also reversed using the reversed feature. The reversed loop 1 is again shortened to around 0.6 seconds by deleting the starting 0.2 seconds of the track. The reversed loop 1 is then moved using the time shift tool to keep around 0.4 seconds of overlap with the end of the reversed loop 4 track. Finally, in the fourth track, I paste a copy of the loop 4-1 end cut, which is the 0.2 seconds cut from the end of the init sound, and adjust it to have around 0.1 seconds of overlap with the end of the reversed loop 1 waveform. After applying the respective fade-ins and fade-outs to the overlapping regions of each of the tracks, the four cuts are mixed together to create the loop 4-1 transition file. With this, we have all the tracks needed to create the custom horn sound slot. Each of the tracks, namely the init, the four loops, the three loop exits, the init to exit transition, the loop 4-1 transition, and exit sound are then exported as separate 16-bit wave format sounds by highlighting them individually and using the file export export selected audio option. The exported files can now be imported into any Loc Sound sound project using the Loc Programmer software. To do this, just navigate to the folder that the exported wave files are located and drag them into the sound section. Then, to populate the custom horn template, simply drag the sound files from the sound section to the respective sound state boxes. In this manner, any horn recording can be easily converted into a custom horn sound slot for your ESU Loc Sound Decoder equipped locomotives. The horn can be previewed using the simulator feature of the Loc Programmer software to check for any discrepancies. The virtual function button can be toggled on and off to control the horn sound slot and listen to how the sound transitions between the various sound states. Now let's listen to how the horn sounds in an actual locomotive model. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video interesting and do tune in for more videos on my railroad modeling journey. Happy modeling!